Hey guys, it's Denver and Misty Valley Paramount. This is one of the looks that I've been working on for my Halloween series. This is what I like to call my floating skull. If you want to see a tutorial on how to get this look, then definitely keep watching because I know you're going to enjoy it. I enjoyed so much making it. So the first thing I'm doing is mapping out kind of where the uh, low points on the face would be. Figure out where you're going to place these lines. I moved my cartilage and I found out that my bone kind of starts right about there. So I looked on a skull bone and there's kind of two little indents in the side and then it goes up in the center. And then just feel and kind of make some marks. Once you have your basic lines on, go ahead and clean up any lines slightly. You don't want to overkill making them perfect. And don't blend them out too far because we're going to do that later with shading. And the more you blend out your lines now, the more intricate you'll have to be with the white, which will take you a lot of extra time. To fill in the black areas, I'm going to take Mayron, this is liquid makeup, and this is going to go into the dark areas, and then likewise Mayron liquid makeup white for the white areas. I'm going to do the black first, and then I'm going to carefully edge the white. One thing to note about the skull, guys, is that if you take the time to make it equal on both sides, it won't look real. I'm now going to go in with a white. Now, as some of you may know, bones are not white. Bones are kind of like an off yellow color with dried blood and stuff on them sometimes, so they're never really fully white. So I'm taking a medium sized foundation brush and I'm going to apply this all over taking care around the areas that have black and not getting that close. So I'll go back in and touch those up after. Alright, so once you have this much on, this is the before the detail stage. What you can do is you could leave it like this if you want to, but really from here you can go anywhere with it that you really want to go. You definitely want to make sure that you add your teeth before you do anything major. Um, and then you just add your fine detailing throughout. Look at the picture of a skull, or look at your face in different different lights and stuff like that. You could tell that the orbital, or right here, the orbital bone, um, actually sticks out farther so it'd be whiter and so you'd shade just right behind it. Um, bones never really have a straight edge, they always sink back a little bit so something to consider as well. Using black again I'm going to go in and create some slightly finer details on the skull. And then if you need to blend them out, do so just with a gentle brush with a little bit of the white on again. If you want to add any severe cracks, go ahead and add those now as well. Now when you're doing your teeth, the teeth actually come back and wrap around to back here. So we want to give the illusion that it's going upwards and backwards. So don't forget about that. To do that, I'm drawing my line on a slight curve just like it would be if you're looking like this. They go up like this. So that's exactly what I'm going to recreate.
So for the teeth, I rounded them out on the top corners and on the bottom corners, and then I shaded in between all the triangular parts on the bottom where they would go down, where the root would go into the gum. And then in between those, I darkened it a little bit to make it look like it was still the center of the teeth. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a solid, very pure white with no black involved at all, and I'm going to put this directly on top of the teeth. One thing I'm going to do with my detail brush again is very lightly in random parts above the teeth add a little bit more detail just where it meets the gum. I want it to look like it's sticking out slightly. So this is actually going to cast a shadow because it is sticking into other bone here. So I'm now going to start shading things. I will be using five colors. All Natural by Ben Nye. Cork by Ben Nye, Espresso by Ben Nye, Black by Ben Nye, and Vanilla by Ben Nye. And starting with Cork, starting with Black, on a very, very short, this is a number 231 by MAC. It's just a very fine, I guess you could call it like a detail. I am going to create some more shapes. I know I have my cheekbone here, but now I need a slightly lighter shape underneath the eye here. Now this is going to be dark right towards it, and then it's going to fade down, and I'm going to lightly brush this up just to blend that edge that's there. And I'm also going to take a slightly bigger brush, and I'm going to start to fade the edges right here as well. Also along here, I'm going to fade it up slightly. Just along the bottom and the top of the teeth here, I'm taking cork. And I'm adding that to everywhere that I added the gray, the mix between the white and the black. And I'm blending it down or into it. If you need to go back in with more liquid color, go ahead. So right now I'm blending out the edges with black. Once I have all my edges blent out with black, I'm going to go back over everything and start blending it out with the lighter colors as I go. The last step is to go through and add some highlights and to also correct any lowlights that may be and then we're going to do the nose. For the nose, starting right here, we're just going to lightly dust darker colors, building it up. And as well, another last step is go through and add some fine detailing if you'd like. The more contrast, black against white, that you have, the more out there it'll look. And I do want some of that, however much I wanted it to look as real as possible. But white against black creates such a strong contrast. And finally, I'm just going to go and blacken the blackest areas. Now, depending on what you want to do, you could do bones coming down, but I am going to fill in everything else.
and that's everything. Now, because this is a floating skull look, you'd want to find something to attach either somewhere around the neck here so that it looks like something is holding it up. Or if you're going to do a photo shoot, you could also go like this, and you could actually make your head look pretty small as well by doing that, just like so. But I hope you all enjoyed it, and I hope you recreate this look. And if you do, I would love to see it. Make sure you post it on my Facebook page because I will comment and rate every single one of them. So until my next video, my next Halloween video, which hopefully won't be that far away, I hope you all have amazing days. Bye. Do you have something warm? I guess you could say, <laughs> I'm chilled to the bone.